What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. It's your boy Al. Just leaving the gym. Um, getting a workout in. Um, finally got my thoughts together to talk about this school shooting in Florida. I didn't want to just fall off the handle and just fall off the cusp and emotions are high. I wanted to give it some time to sink in and marinate and think about what I wanted to say. Um, I've already addressed in a previous video the uh, issue with um, mental illness and claiming everybody who is the white persuasion who does something like this is mentally ill as opposed to just a violent jerk. Um, there are violent jerks out there who are just violent, jerkish people. Um, you know, you, you claim everybody's mentally ill that, you know, shoots and kills a lot of people. You'd have to go all the way back and call Columbus mentally ill um, and King Leopold II mentally ill. Alexander the Great would have to be mentally ill. General Custard would have to be mentally ill. Um, you know, Adolf Hitler would have had to be mentally ill, which a lot of people think he was. But um, I think it's convenient to paint any Caucasian who does things like this mentally ill. And I've already addressed that in another video. It's on my page. Uh, you can check it out uh, if you're a subscriber or if you're just new to my videos. But again, we deal with the issue of a mass shooting and then everybody going crazy about gun, gun laws, gun control. Um, uh, first thing is, I don't want anybody telling me I don't have the right to bear arms. Um, you know, these school shootings isn't about the right to bear arms. It's about having um, availability, uh, access to the kind of weaponry that doesn't call for you to have to be able to protect your home. I'm all about the right to, you know, bear firearms, handguns, even a good old fashioned shotgun, you know? Um, but an AR-15, here's the question that I have about people who like to defend the rights to have automatic or semi-automatic weapons. Like, who are you, who, who are you thinking or suspecting is going to break in your house? Like, I saw Planet of the Apes, just like everybody else, but I don't think Caesar and Buck and, you know, all the apes from Planet of the Apes are going to start, you know, committing break-ins in the suburbs. So, I mean, if you were suspecting or waiting on that, then yeah, maybe an F-15 would be something you want to have, but what is the purpose of this? I, I have a couple of suspicions and sneaky suspicions. I, I, you know, a few years ago, Public Enemy did an album called Fear of the Black Planet. It, it was a follow-up to their greatest album, The Taste of Nation of Millions, the whole is back to that album called Fear of Black Planet. And, and my suspicion is that a lot of, particularly our, our white American brothers and sisters, strap up with these AR-15 rifles for the fear of an onslaught of Negroes just busting in their house, raping and pillaging. And I don't know if white people have been paying close enough attention to us, but Negroes don't rob white folks. Okay. I live in Houston, but there's black communities and there are white communities. Whenever a black guy's busted robbing of somebody, he's across the street in his own neighborhood. Okay. So white people across America, if you're strapping up with all these guns because you're scared of Negroes, you're scared we coming to your neighborhoods, forget about it. We ain't coming. Don't don't strap up with all of these heavy machinery, artillery, handguns, because you think uh, uh, Shaka Zulu and the Warriors or the Aztecs are coming for you. We we not coming out there where y'all stay, man. Trying to rob y'all. We 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 not. <laughs> we we not. I grew up in I grew up in a. In, in, in Acres home in the middle of the crack era and I can tell you when it come to us robbing we gonna rob our own we, we go into our neighborhood which is a whole nother issue and a whole nother video for a whole nother time but stop strapping up with all of these semi-automatic weapons waiting for people to come and rob you who ain't coming and ending up in situations where they are being turned on your own neighborhoods and own communities by your own sons because that's all that's happening. All that's happening is these handguns that you, these these automatic rifles that you're buying with anticipation of being robbed by 
uh, Nino Brown and G Money and the Dutta Man, and you waiting for that big Negro to come to your door, and he ain't coming. The only thing that's happening is your son grabbing these guns with his low self esteem, and his 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 low IQ, and he's killing and pillaging your own communities and your own schools. So you can stop strapping up with these guns to stop us because we, we, we ain't studying y'all. We ain't coming out there. No way. We ain't, we ain't coming to the woodlands. We ain't coming to River Oaks. We're not going out there. So <laughs> um, white people in America with, with, with your arsenal of automatic rifles, if you're saving them for the oncoming Negro, the charging, angry, rebellion black man, you can keep them because it ain't happening. Um, all you're doing is causing damage to your own community, your own schools, um, your own neighborhoods, because these kids get their hands on them and they go crazy. Another issue is not only why do we need these kinds of automatic rifles, but why are they so freely available? Why are they so available? Um, why is it so easy to get your hands on something that you would go to war with? Um, I think America has an issue um, with going, being too gun crazy or having what we presume to be power. We presume that having handguns is power. You know what America's like? And I talked about this in church. America is like Samson in the Bible. Samson was one of the judges in the Bible, the last judge. The perception of Samson to the average person is that he was a great man. He was a great judge of all the judges. But in actuality, Samson was the biggest failure. And Samson was the biggest failure because with all of his muscle and all of his physical strength, he didn't do anything right. He had no moral fiber. He had low morality. He had... Um, he was narcissistic, self-serving, self-indulging. He was petty, just like the United States of America. The United States of America is the country version of Samson. We got all of this muscle. We got all of this strength. We got all of this weaponry, all of these automatic rifles, all of these air, war, or aircraft uh, carriers holding all of these uh, bomber planes with all of these battleships and all of these tanks just rusting away, trillions of dollars being spent on all of this uh, this machinery and this weaponry, which gives us a perception of strength. But like Samson, we have no morality. Um, we're selfish. We're self-serving. We're self-indulging. We're petty. And while we think we're the strongest, we're actually the biggest failure. Um, you want to know what strength is? Look at the education system of other countries and look at our education system. Look at the amount of mass shootings we have in this country uh, versus other countries. Look at the uh, level of mass incarcerations we have in the United States of America uh, versus other countries. Again, a perceived strength, but we're really a failure as a country. Um, don't get me wrong. It, it, it's a great country when we put our pettiness behind us and put our heads together and do great things but it's getting with our leader that we have it's getting harder and harder to do and i believe that you know don't don't take the freedom away don't stop and stop talking about if you're all these people to the far left um we don't need any more guns uh no because criminals gonna always get their hands on guns and if all the law-abiding citizens don't have guns and nobody but the criminals have guns it's gonna be open season it's gonna be like the movie robocop when all of the cops uh went on strike it's gonna be crazy so we don't need that to happen but what we do need to happen is some legislation that stops people from getting their hands on these automatic rifles because they're doing nothing but creating chaos um throughout the communities um and throughout our society and i think it's a shame that people have had to bury their children and loved ones because some goofball uh, got bullied and decided to shoot up the school. And can I say this? Um, what happened in this country where our kids are so weak-minded? When I, when I think of bullying, 
See, I'm 40 years old. When I think of bullying, I think of somebody beating you up every day, taking your lunch money, you know, hitting you, pushing you down the stairs, things like that. That's what I thought these young kids were talking about. They talk about bullying. But if I'm just coming to school and cracking a bunch of your mama jokes and you call that bullying, bro, you need to toughen up. You need to, you need to man up. Maybe I should... Man, I've thought about this. Maybe I should write a book for bullied children uh, about how to... Uh, about how to do what we do and call Texas rank on people, um, which was one of my, uh, <laughs> I say gifts, but it was something that I was good at. Ranking, if you don't know what ranking is, it was sort of a sport when I was in junior high school and high school where you come to school and your friends would just go to tan you up, talk about your shoes, your clothes, your hair, your mama, and you had to come right back with yours. And they say something about your mama, you say something about their mama. They say something about your shoes, you say something about your shoes. And it was a sport to see who could get the biggest laugh or who could say the most clever thing. Um, but never did we <laughs> hear people doing that. And girls and guys could do it. I know some girls that would tear you up. Um, and But we didn't consider it bullying. We just knew that when somebody came at you, you was going to come right back at them. And I was one of the coldest ever. Like I get you, I will get you. I mean, I, I could I could go all day on your mama, and and one of the things that 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 you got to know about ranking is ranking is designed in a way where it doesn't matter what you have on or how expensive or how in, 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 of how cool it is that you went, you could still get tore up. You could come to school in the latest fashion. And the, and it cost you know more than anything else anybody else got on, and you could still get it because it could be ugly as all outdoors. It don't it don't matter. It's in the ranking. You're not excluded from being ranked on because you got on fly gear or it's expensive. And 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 I think kids today actually miss out on good times just sitting around ranking on each other, just talking about each other. Um, I mean, it never got personal. And if it did, you let somebody know about it. Um, but I, I, I was thinking about, you know, maybe writing a book with a few of my jokes. Um, you know, some of my classic your mama jokes. You know, your mama ain't got no fingers always talking about pressing charges. Your mama don't have no arms talking about she, she trying to throw a fit. You know, some of my old school your mama jokes. Um, put some of those in there for some kids so they can know how to defend themselves verbally. Cause I'm tired of this bullying crap. I'm tired of kids talking about they getting bullied when all they're getting done, all that's happening is somebody talking about how tight their shirt is. Um, uh, and these kids need to be toughened up, um, and and they need to uh, be taught um, how to um, just be kids and just just take jokes. And somebody call you fat. My man went to school to do man. My boy had big hair. Ari was fat as all outdoors. It had an S curl too. And psh, man, you go up to hell. He coming at you. He spitting that fire, baby. You talking about how fat he is? You talking about how skinny you is? What no bull? He bullying me? No. Come on with the jokes. That's the way I was brought up. I don't know what happened. You know, too many kids being sheltered. But if you was raised like I was raised, you know, if you come to the lunch table with too many stripes in your shirt, you better come. You better be able to verbally defend yourself because they coming after you. Um, but I, I think that. Um, this country has a long way to go um, to fix a lot of these things. This country has a long way to go. Uh, we got problems with gun control, with being able to get all these automatic weapons. Got problems with kids in, in this country, um, their education, their, their level of tolerance, um, the mental illness. And I, I'll say this, um, and, and I'm going to shut it down. Um, I, I, I've always said this as a, as a, as a minister. So as a man of God, whenever you exclude God from any equation, chaos will ensue. Whenever you exclude God from any equation, chaos will ultimately ensue. And I think in a nation that is less godly, a nation where man takes credit for everything, 
You exclude God from 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 anything. Chaos will ensue. And in a country where we've let our children, you know, raise themselves and do what they want to do, and 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 kids need independence, a certain level of independence. Don't get me wrong, um, but I believe in Scripture. I believe that if you train a child up in a way that they should go, when they get old, they will never depart from it. And I believe we've given kids too many options to do too many things, and none of them pertain to having a relationship with God. Uh, none of them, none of them pertain to having a relationship. Uh, with Jesus Christ, uh, none of them pertain to having a a, a, a healthy relationship, um, even with uh, their own fellow man. Because one of the keys to Christianity is to love thy neighbor as thyself. It's hard to love your neighbor as yourself when the only thing you know about your neighbor is you see him on the screen all the time. Um, this social media and these phones have um, desensitized us to the value of humanity. One of the values of growing up being able to sit on the porch with your with your boom box with your friends, you know, trading, swapping cassette tapes, swapping the Run DMC for the Beastie Boys, or swapping the Kooji Rap and Polo for the Eric B and Rakim, or swapping the NWA for the Fat Boys, you know, sitting there with your homies on the porch kicking it, you know, when you were growing up, it gave you a, a personal relationship with them where you valued like we never thought about killing each other, taking each other's lives. We never thought about hurting each other's feelings to the point where we would make each other cry because we spent days with each other, looking each other in the face. We didn't see each other on a on an iPad or, 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 or cell phone. We had to sit down and talk to one another face to face, break bread with each other. And it gave us a value of human life. We, we value life. Because when you can touch your brother, touch your sister, um, be close to him, it helps you and it teaches you to value life. And I think we need to reevaluate. Um, you can't never take you can't take technology from the world. But I want to challenge the parents out there: you take these devices from the kids every now and then. Make them go outside and play with each other. Um, neighbors, get together with your kids. You know, let them play with each other. Let them play some basketball. Or play soccer in the yard. Let them sit on the porch. And talk to one another um, put the devices down and establish some human contact so you can know that that's real blood flesh and bone bones that you're talking to and not just somebody who you can hit the delete button and they're not your friend anymore um, understand that that's value that's a, a valuable life and not just somebody that as soon as you don't like them anymore you can blow their head off or or, or you know say uh, sensitive things about them um, with no remorse and just um, berate them every day because you don't give a damn if they live or die. The kids that get, you know, commit suicide and kids hear about it and they laugh and they think it's funny because they don't value human life. Kids do not value human life. And I think it's up to us as Americans to teach our kids to value human life. So I think these are a couple of things that you know, will help this situation with these school shootings and help us progress, man, in, in, a, in a direction um, that that is different than the one we're going in because we, we're going nowhere fast. This country is going nowhere fast. We have this perception of strength, but we're really weak. We're really failing. And if we continue this way, we're going to be just like Samson. The last thing Samson could do in his last prayer was ask the Lord to just let me push these blocks down on these people and kill myself. Um, and even then he was selfish because he said, you know, let me do this because of the eyesight that was taken from me. Um, and if we're not careful, that's all we're going to be. It's just people just with one wish to get our revenge. And that's it. And we don't need to be, be that way. We don't need to go that route. We need to be a better people. We need to be a better country black and white, uh, young and old, uh, it's time to put this foolishness aside and um, start being better people. Um, and I think it starts with our, our leader, um, Donald Trump. Um, as crazy as he is, as much of a nutcase as he is, people need to understand something about Donald Trump. Donald Trump didn't fall out of the sky. He didn't hatch an egg. He came from 
American parents went to American schools, grew up in an American neighborhood, went to American grocery stores in the United States of America. He is a, whether we like it or not, he is a reflection of our country. Self-centered, narcissistic, pat yourself on the back, self-preserved people. That's who we are. So he's more of a reflection of us than we think. Um, and if we are wondering how somebody like that could be elected as president, probably need to look in the mirror. Peace and blessings, everybody. Don't forget to um, subscribe to my channel, Al Prince II, on YouTube. Click the subscribe button. Tell me how you feel, whether you like it, you don't like it. If you don't like it, tell me you don't like it. Just try to keep it respectable. So I always try to keep it respectable with you. Peace.